Jesus, who can fail to be astonished at hearing the same prophets preach in clear and transparent language that the advent of Christ and the falling away from the Jews would be followed by the call of the Gentiles, which called itself also straightway became a fact in accordance with the prophecies through the teachings of our Savior. For though him, for through him multitudes from every race of mankind turned away from the delusion of idols and embraced the true knowledge and worship of him who is God over all, will nigh ratifying the oracles of men of old, and especially that one which by Jeremy the prophet said, O Lord my God, unto thee shall the nations come from the ends of the earth, and shall say, Our fathers inherited false idols, and there was no prophet in them. Shall a man make unto himself gods, which yet are no gods? Chapter 4 All their circumstances then confirm the story of the facts of our religion and show that it was not contrived from any human impulse by divinity foreknown and divinely announced beforehand by the written oracles and yet far more that divinely proffered to all men by our Savior. Afterwards also it received power from God and was so established that after these many years of persecution both by the invisible demons and by the visible rulers of each age it shined forth far more brightly and daily becomes more conspicuous conspicuous and grows and multiplies more and more thus it is plain that the help which comes down from the God of the universe supplies to the teachings the name of our Savior, its irresistible and invincible force, and its victorious powers against its enemies. Also the help thence gained towards a happy life for all men, not only from his expressed words, but also from the secret power was surely an indication of his divine power, for it must have been of a divine and secret power that straightway at his word and with the doctrine which he put forth concerning the sole sovereignty of the one God who is over all. At once the human race was set free from the delusional or the delusive working of demons, at once also from the multiple from the multi- multitude of rulers among the nations. In fact, whereas of old in each nation numberless kings and local governments held power and in different cities some were governed by the democracy and some by tyrants and some by a multiple multitude of rulers and hence wars of all kinds naturally arose nations clashing against nations and constantly rising up against their neighbors ravaging and being ravaged and making war in in their sieges one against another so that from these causes the whole population both of dwellers in the cities and laborers in the fields from mere childhood were taught warlike exercises and always wore swords both in the high in the highways and in the villages and fields. When God when God's Christ was come all this was changed.
For concerning him it had been proclaimed of old by the prophets, in this in his days shall righteously flourish in abundance of peace, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. And nation shall not take sword against nation, and they shall not learn war any more. In accordance with these predictions and actual events followed, immediately all the multitudes of the rulers among the Romans began to abolish when Augustus became sole ruler at the time of our Savior's appearance. And from that time to the present you cannot see, as before, cities at war with cities, nor nation fighting with nation, nor life being worn away in the old confusion. Surely there is a good cause when one considers it to wonder why of old when the demons tyrannized over all the nations and men paid them much worship. They were groated by the gods themselves into furious wars against each other. So that now Greeks were at war with Greeks, and now Egyptians with Egyptians, and Syrians with Assyrians, and Romans with Romans, and all made slaves of each other, and wore each other out with sieges, as in fact the histories of the ancients on these matters show. But that at the same time with our Savior's most religious and peaceful teaching and, destruct, and the destruction of polytheistic error began to be accomplished and the dissensions of the nations at once to find rest from former troubles. This especially I consider to be a very great proof of the divine and irresistible power of our Savior, and of the benefit which visibly proceeds from our, his doctrines. You may see a clear proof if you consider that at no other time from the, the beginning until now, nor by any of the illustrious men of old, but only from his utterance and his teachings diffused throughout the whole world, the customs of all nations are now set aright, even those customs which before were savage and bar barbarous, so that Persians who have become his disciples no longer marry their mothers, nor Scythians feed on human flesh because of Christ's word which has come even unto them nor other races of barbarians have <coughs> incestuous union with daughters and sisters nor do men madly lust after men and pursue unnatural pleasures nor do those whose practice it formerly was now expose their dead kindred, kindred of dogs and birds, nor strangle the aged as they did formerly, nor do they feast according to their ancient customs on the flesh of their dearest friends when dead nor, like the ancients, offer human sacrifices to the demons as to gods, nor slaughter their dearest friends and think it piety. For these, the numberless things akin to the, these were what of old made havoc of human life. It is recorded, for instance, in history that the Massagate and Dorbises deemed those of their kindred who died a natural death most miserable and for this reason hastened to sacrifice and to feast upon the aged among their dearest friends. The 
Kybera and I used to throw their old kinsmen alive down a precipice, a precipice in the high cr- high cr- her Hurricanians and Caspians threw them out of out night threw them out to birds and dogs and former while alive and the latter when dead. But the Scythians used to bury them alive and to slaughter over their funeral pyres those who were most dear to the deceased. The Bactrians who used to cast those who had grown old alive to the dogs. Those, however, were customs of a former age and are now no longer practiced in the same manner. And the solitary law of the power of the gospel, having alone abolished the savage and inhumane pests of all these evils. Then there is the fact that men no longer regard as gods either the lifeless and dumb images or the evil demons operating in them or the parts of the visible world or the souls of the more long since departed or the most hurtful of irrational animals but instead of all these solely through the teaching of our savior in the gospels in the gospel greeks and barbarians together who sincerely and in fine and finally adhere to his word have reached such a point of high philosophy as to worship and praise and acknowledge as divine none but the most high God the very same who is above the universe the absolute monarch and lord of heaven and earth and sun and stars <coughs> creator also who creator also of the whole world <coughs> They have also learned to live a strict life so as to be guided even in looking with their eyes and to conceive no licentious thought from a lustful look, but to cut away the very roots of every base passion from the mind itself. Must not then all these things help all men towards a virtuous and happy life? What also of the fact <coughs> that man that men, far from perjuring themselves, have no need even of a truthful oath because of learning from him to swear not at all, but in all things to be guileless? and true so as to be satisfied with yea and nay making their purpose to be stronger than any oath and then the fact that even in simple sayings and common conversations they are not indifferent but carefully measure their words even in these so as to utter by their voice no lie nor railing nor any foul and unseemingly word because again of his ab- admonition ad- admonition wherein he said for every idle word ye shall give account in the day of judgment <laughs>